This was a perfect place. It was like heaven on earth. This is what Jesus commands us to pray. He says, pray that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. He, he wants us to bring heaven down. He wants us to be a bit of heaven so that the people living in hell would see with their physical eyes that there is a God who lives. That's why Christ came down from heaven. The image of God was revealed. The light that made all men came into the world to shine the light in the darkness so that the men who are in darkness would see the light and hopefully get saved, hopefully be convicted, hopefully turn around. We are the people of God and the people of God are called to be light bearers. We are called to be salt bearers. We are called to shine forth the image of the invisible God. And when that happens, people will see something about you. They should see something about you. They should see that this person is different. They should understand that they themselves are empty when you are in the room. That's what happens when light bearers or people of God are there. That's why, that's why the devil always hated the people of God. Because the devil lacked or missed out on what he could have had if he was obedient. And now it's in the hands of lower creatures than the angels. It's in humanity. So the devil is upset. He's He's jealous, he's envious, he wish he didn't make that mistake, but it's too late. It's like Esau who sold his birthright for a morsel of soup. It was too late. He already made the deal with Jacob to give up his birthright, and you can't take it back. Sometimes we make choices that we just can't take back. When you're growing up, there's certain things that our parents told us to do, but instead of listening to our parents, we decided to go hang out with the gangs and then we got arrested. We cannot take it back. The choice was made. In fact, everything we say today, we cannot take our words back. We can apologize, but the damage is already done. We can't take it back. Every day and every minute and every hour that goes by, is an hour spent and you cannot get it back. You cannot get your time back. You cannot get your breath back. You cannot get your, your, your thoughts back. Once the thought crosses, it was it crossed. It's, it's done. It, it's past. That's why we call the uh, certain time the past. And now we have the present. And I like the fact that it's called the present because it's a gift. You always have a gift right in front of you every day. And you can do something with that present, that gift. But that present is a fleeting present. It only lasts for a, a millisecond or even, uh, I, I, I don't know all the, the terms, but there's you know, a, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second. That's the present. And we always look forward to the future. But you can't do anything about the past. You cannot, you cannot take it back. That person that hurts you, it's not going to change by rehearsing it in your mind. It's not going to disappear. It happened. It was done. And you got to do something about it in your present and in your future. You have to make sense of it. I don't know how you're going to do it. But you cannot change the past. Your decisions are very crucial to your future. Jews believe that every year that crosses, especially what happens on the 10 days before Yom Kippur, which is the, the days of awe, the days before uh, from Rosh Hashanah, where, the, the, where that, that, that word means Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. And so there's a 10-day period between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur where the trumpet is blown, the people of God gather, and for those 10 days, they're called to look inside of their lives to see if anything they are doing is, is, is going to jeopardize their future. And Jews believe that whatever you do in those two day, 10 days, and I'm not saying it's 100% accurate, but they say that God is going to write your future, your next year, based on what you did in those 10 days. 
If you repented in those 10 days, if you, if you got your act together in those 10 days, then your next year would be a prosperous year. But if in those 10 days you continued in the same patterns that you, you did all year round, your next year is going to be a devastating year. It's very interesting when I think about this because it says to me that, um, that your decisions will pave your future. It will pave the path for everything that comes ahead. Do you know that I've been trying for years to get my health in order? And when I say years, I, I, I'm serious. Once I crossed the, the bracket of around 33, 34, I noticed that my metabolism, my energy, my testosterone levels were not the same. And I couldn't eat the same way that I did all my life. Is, is there anybody cross, who's crossed that age with me that's willing to confess? Amen. Okay, a few of you. The rest of you are liars. Amen. Once I crossed 33, I, man, things changed for me. I couldn't eat what I wanted to eat. And I wanted to keep myself in shape. I wanted to feel the way I felt when I was young. And everything became harder and harder. It, when you see those elderly people in wheelchairs, they're not just sitting there for nothing. <laughs> they're sitting there because they have no energy. They're sitting there because their body has decayed to such a point that is very hard for them to move. So they have to conserve all the energy that they have just in order to spread their bed or to get up or to eat food. It's happening to all of us. Our life is falling apart. We are naturally decaying because of sin. And so when I hit around the age of 36, I said to myself, I got I to gotta really buck it up. And so I tried to change my diet. I tried to be a little more vegan. It didn't last for more than a month. And I gained the weight back. I tried to minimize the amount of junk food. But, but every time I minimized it for a couple weeks, the cravings would come back and I would end up buying more junk food. And over and over and over, I started and then I failed. I started and then I failed. And I started and I failed until now. And this is eight years of struggle. Now, that does say something about me. I'll be honest. I'm not perfect. Says that my discipline was a bit weak. You know, I'm, I'm, I... You know, as a preacher, I call people to discipleship. I call people to commitment. I call, but this, this, in every single one of us, there's always something that we leave a little room of, for grace. Yeah, am, I, am I right? A little room. I, I mean, okay, I get it. Show up to church. I got that down pat. Okay, I get it. Let me pray. I'll, I'll pray every morning. But the nachos? I leave that alone, Pastor. <laughs> We're saved by grace, Pastor. The donuts? <laughs> the McDonald's? The sugary drinks? The pop, the Coke, the Sprite, the A&W? Leave that alone. It's always, you know, leave my video games alone. For some of you, it's, 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 it's not as innocent as the food or, or the video games. Some of you, it's, it's what you watch on the internet. Leave that alone. You make excuses for yourself. Or leave my young and the hopeless alone. Leave, 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 that, leave, leave that bar alone. Leave, leave it alone. You know, I'm just a man. Leave, leave my football alone. Leave my uh, Super Bowl alone. Leave my UFC alone. Leave my friends alone. Nothing wrong with him or her. Leave them alone. Leave my relatives, my parents alone. You know, so, some of you have to grow up. You know, the Bible says, you know, the man will leave his father and cling to his wife, and the two shall become one. But for some of you, maybe a lot of you, you haven't 
You, 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 you have these mommy issues. You still haven't let go of your mom. You're a man and you're still going home to mom. You put your mom before your wife. Your mom's even living in your own house. You'd rather listen to the decision of your mom or the judgment of your mom than your own wife. No wonder you're divorced right now. You see, those little areas in our lives, the decisions we make. So eight years I've been, I've been, I've been wrestling. I, I can say I think I finally got it under grip. And I'm only mentioning this because it took me eight years to overcome something that maybe for some of you would only take one month. Decisions that we make that will affect your future. Things that we do today are not so easy to change for tomorrow.